two bills have been introduced in Congress to give the Environmental Protection Agency the authority to impose environmental regulations anywhere in the six-state Chesapeake Bay watershed. This would support the EPA's plan to put total maximum daily load restrictions in place, establishing a nutrient diet for the bay. Because this is such a complex issue, the EPA is using a computer model to set these limits. But Virginia farmers warn that model could be badly flawed. Since they already know it does not include much of the cleanup efforts, agriculture's already contributed. Just recently, uh, they updated this computer, the, the information in this computer model, uh, and I think they had to change the numbers by 5% uh, or so. Now, 5% doesn't sound like a whole lot, uh, but when you're talking about uh, an annual load of 200 million pounds of nitrogen, well, 5% of 200 million pounds it is a lot. So I see using this computer model uh, in, in a similar way as I see using a GPS navigational tool that doesn't have the latest road information. Uh, it, it's very easy to take a wrong turn. Scott Mundy's farms in Virginia's northern neck, very close to the Chesapeake Bay. He's in charge of writing his farm's nutrient management plans and says the EPA's proposal to do all this by the end of 2010 is too ambitious. I don't know that the personnel is in place uh, to, to write the nutrient management plans that would be required. I don't know that uh, the, the regu regulatory personnel is in place, and I don't know that all that could happen in a, in, in a timely fashion. Meanwhile, Don Parrish with the American Farm Bureau warns the EPA's plan could have severe repercussions for local governments, businesses, and even homeowners in the Bay watershed. That's because it would end the traditional local control of land use decisions. If you have to get a stormwater permit, a federal stormwater permit, to build a school or a hospital or a road, uh, we're talking about an opportunity now for not only the federal government to stop that, but for citizens to sue to stop that. Paris says farmers have been working hard to clean up the bay over the past 25 years, and it's showing slow improvement. We do have a wonderful environment, uh, and we do have a lot of people. And clearly, when you have a lot of people, you need jobs and you need roads, you know, so that they can get to work and get to schools and get to church and get to their, their employment. And unfortunately, what you're talking about here is something that's a train wreck. It is a train wreck that's going to bring everything to a halt and run everything through our court system. Paris says proposals to clean up the bay all come down to whether control is in local hands or the federal government and who's going to pay for them. Farm Bureau's always preferred the local approach because farmers are closer to the land and know what's needed to do the job most effectively. In the 2008 Farm Bill, uh, appropriated to, uh, $188 million towards the agricultural sector uh, for this restoration, but that does, that's not a drop in the bucket for the most conservative estimate of $15 billion uh, to complete the restoration. Parrish says what's really needed to effectively clean up the Chesapeake Bay is for local leaders to draw up their own plans and get to work on them, because otherwise the federal government will force them to do it, and it'll be a lot more expensive for everyone while forcing a lot of farmers out of business. In Richmond County, Virginia, I'm Norm Hyde.